Well, Canada, in fact, um, endorsed a set of global strategies developed by UNAIDS and the WHO in order to move towards the elimination of HIV, viral hepatitis, and sexually transmitted diseases as public health threats by 2030. These global strategies follow a similar approach and they include targets for uh, prevention, so reduction of new infections, as well as targets for diagnosis and increasing the numbers of people in treatment and care. So for HIV, the global target calls for 90% of those with HIV be diagnosed, 90% of those diagnosed to be on treatment, and lastly, 90% of those on treatment achieving uh, viral suppression. So the global hepatitis target calls for 90% of those with viral hepatitis be diagnosed, and 80% of um, those eligible for treatment to be on treatment by 2030. So what does it mean when Canada endorses these global health sector strategies and targets? These are, as I said, global frameworks for action. And by endorsing these, Canada has made a commitment uh, on both the domestic front of um, moving towards the elimination of HIV and viral hepatitis by 2030, but also to support the global efforts uh, internationally. Setting these targets has a number of advantages uh, domestically in that it focuses our collective action. It also uh, uses data in a way um, to drive those specific areas of action. It also helps to identify gaps and ways that we can address them. The last estimates released on World AIDS Day 2016 shows that uh, we have a ways to go on the first two targets, uh, but we're very close to the third one. An estimated 80% of persons living with HIV are diagnosed. 76% of persons diagnosed were on treatment. And lastly, 89% of persons on treatment achieve viral suppression. So with our targets, we are in fact within the range of um, other countries uh, similar to ours like Australia, the United States, and uh, Western European countries. It's um, adopted, as I said, by Canada um, nationally, but there are also communities that are uh, using these targets to demonstrate how well they're doing. Some First Nations communities, through their own leadership and their uh, community empowerment, has actually achieved 1990 for HIV, which is a tremendous achievement. Another federal population of interest are the federal co correctional facilities. Uh, they too are looking at the 1990 targets and have achieved them, in fact, for uh, federal inmates. So for viral hepatitis, we estimate that 56% of those with hepatitis C are diagnosed. We recognize that we have some work to do, and together with all of our partners, provinces and territories, and all the stakeholders, I'm confident that um, we are, will be able to achieve those targets. Uh, we have some exciting, new, effective treatment for hepatitis C. More recently, for example, the Pan-Canadian Pharmaceutical Alliance was successful in negotiating lower prices uh, for hepatitis C drugs, which I believe will really make them uh, more accessible to those who need them. Together, the HIV community has attained a great deal, but we have room uh, to do more especially when we are now in the face of the elimination of um, these epidemics. Attaining epidemic control will not be achieved with a one-size-fits-all approach. To prevent new sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections, we can improve access to evidence-based strategies such as safer sex programs and harm reduction services. 
And we must ensure that all such services and interventions engage those who are living with these infections and that they must be culturally appropriate and adapted to the populations, specific populations that we're trying to serve. To tackle the continued high number of people who are unaware that they're infected, we need to make it as easy as possible um, for people to access testing, uh, such as point of care testing, uh, home testing can be investigated, and um, system-wise, we need to uh, look at the ways and enable the frontline health care providers to normalize testing of sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections. We can also leverage other innovative approaches. For example, the National Microbiology Lab of the Public Health Agency has been working with First Nations community, a community-driven approach to looking at novel diagnostics uh, using dry blood spot testing. This is also important to establish um, linkage to care and prevention and treatment uh, for those who are diagnosed. It has been known for some time that achieving viral suppression um, through antiretroviral therapy is critical to the health of people living with HIV to achieve a healthy, uh, normal um, lifespan. But research to date has also shown that a person living with HIV who is on antiretroviral treatment and takes the medications consistently as prescribed and maintains a suppressed viral load, that there is effectively no chance of transmitting HIV to their sexual partner. This knowledge has huge implications and it means that we can actually put a stop to new infections uh, by getting people on effective treatment. Finally, we must address stigma and discrimination. That is a common barrier to all of um, the uh, diseases that we're trying to um, eliminate. I'm speaking about stigma in all of its forms, structural stigma, uh, personal and self-stigma, and um, a whole range of um, stigma that the population that we're trying to serve um, uh, being impacted, whether it is stigma towards indigenous populations, homophobia, transphobia, um, sexism, and uh, ableism. And we must be able to address all of these in order for us to achieve our targets. We are going to be developing a pan-Canadian framework for action which leverages on these global targets and will be the next phase of how we're going to be moving forwards uh, in uh, addressing the elimination of these public health threats. It is incumbent, I think, for all of us to work together to cre create the kind of environments that enables people to get easy access to diagnosis, to be provided with treatment and the care that is driven by their own desires of empowerment and should come from a place of strength.